the world is full of supercar startups that never made it. Some we hear about, some we don't. Magnate falls more in the latter column, but looking at this rare prototype, we can't help but wish that it had succeeded. Information is sketchy at best, but what we appear to be looking at is a failed attempt to revive the Bizarrini name. The Italian supercar manufacturer was a brief flash in the pan in the 1960s, spearheaded by former Ferrari and Alfa Romeo engineer Giotto Bizzarini. The company closed in 1969, but about a decade ago, UK-based Galmer Engineering revealed its plans to resurrect the mark with a new supercar. The idea was to revive Bizzarini's original P538 in modern form. The design called for a carbon fiber bodywork over a tubular frame with the Corvette Z06S 7.0 liter LS7 V8 in the middle kicking out 505 horsepower. That may not sound like all that much for a supercar these days, but it was competitive with the Ferrari F430, 483 HP, Lamborghini Gallardo, 513 HP, and Ford GT, 550 HP that it would have to rival at that time. Despite the reported blessing of its namesake, the project failed to get off the ground. It was subsequently rebranded as the Magnate P708, which didn't fare any better. Anyway, a decade or so later, the first prototype is coming up for auction. RM Sotheby's estimates it will sell for around 300 to 500,000 euros in Paris during Retro Mobile Week in February. Those who really miss the Bizarrini mark will also find a pair of originals from 1968 up for auction at the same event, a 1900 GT Europa, estimated value 250 to 300,000 euros, and a 5300 GT Strata, Euro 800 K1M. Though the originals wear European plates and the new prototype Montana ones, we wouldn't be surprised if they all come from the same collection. VW Group's MOIA Mobility Startup has revealed a six-seater electric minibus concept specifically made for ride pooling. The new concept was presented at the 2017 TechCrunch in Berlin just one year after its inception, featuring standalone seats with plenty of legroom and things like dimmable reading lights, USB ports and of course Wi-Fi for the passengers. Luggage can be stored next to the driver while the automated door and optimized handlebar make getting in and out of the car easier. No technical details were revealed, apart from a driving range of 300 kilometers, 186 miles, and the ability to recharge up to 80% of its battery in 30 minutes. The car represents total comfort and is a crucial piece of our consistent service experience. We developed it using our co-creation process, which involved multiple rounds of potential users of various age groups testing cars and providing feedback. Many of the ideas from this process went directly into the development of the car. We're also working on other future versions as well, says Robert Henrik, MOIA coup. MOIA's entire ecosystem is scheduled to launch in Hamburg, Germany at the end of 2018, including the new electric minibus. The goal is to replace 1 million cars on European and US cities by 2025. The first fleet of vehicles in Hamburg will start out with 200 cars and scale up to 1,000 in the coming years. In 2018, we'll be ready to launch our ride pooling concept internationally and take the first steps toward our goal of reducing the number of cars in major cities by 1 million in Europe and the USA by 2025, says Ole Harms, MOIA CEO. The new ride pooling service will work through a mobile application, similar to what other services are doing including Uber. The app will tell you which cars are available and how much the ride will cost before you book a trip. MOIA will group passengers with similar destinations together through a special algorithm, in order to increase the capacity of each car and avoid detours. Kenya-based Mobius Motors is launching its second SUV model, specifically designed to tackle the harsh roads of Africa without breaking the wallet. The new generation of the rugged Mobius 2 is based on a ladder chassis with a steel space frame mounted on top of it, making it a robust choice for transporting people and goods for long distances over less than ideal roads. 
Up front the new Mobius 2 utilizes double wishbones while at the rear it features a live axle with leaf springs, enabling it to carry heavier loads while still offering a responsive vehicle performance on the road. Power is provided by a 1.8-liter petrol engine that makes 131 HP, 98 kilowatts, mated to a 5-speed manual gearbox. All models according to the company's website are going to be rear-driven. The dependable character of the Mobius 2 continues inside, featuring simple lines and just the basics, with the company offering an 8-inch high-def infotainment system with mirror link and air conditioning as options. Entry-level models have two seats only. Of course the key attraction in the Mobius II's case is the price, starting from 1.3 million Kenyan shillings, around $12,610, the new African SUV costs roughly the same money with a 5-6 to six year old sedan in Kenya. Mobius Motors believes their new model is just the right car for the African continent, offering great value for money, along with the necessary rugged character. The company has already opened the order books, with the first examples of the Mobius 2 expected to hit the streets early next year. Introduced in the 2016 model year and diversified in 2017, the Nissan Titan and more capable Titan XD enter 2018 with a blacked-out appearance package to their names. Baptized by their maker Midnight Edition, the two pickup trucks feature dark inserts inside and out, as well as 20-inch black wheels, smoked headlamps, and black fog lamp finishers. Priced at $1,250 and representing a discount of up to $1,360, depending on trim level, compared to the equipment ordered separately, the Midnight Edition is covered by the same 5-year-100,000 mile warranty as it's the case with any other Titan. If the blacked out looks aren't your thing, the Titan you all know and love is available at $29,780, for the S single cab. The cheapest Titan XD for the 2018 model year is the S single cab with the gasoline engine at $31,790, whilst the diesel powered Titan XD starts at $37,340. Customers who won't settle for anything but the best Nissan has to offer can get the Platinum, which costs $56,050 in crew cab form. One of the reasons the Titan is more expensive than full-size pickups from domestic automakers is the extensive standard equipment list, as well as the standard engine. The 5.6-liter endurance V8 packs 390 horsepower and adequate torque even in the most Spartan of trim levels, and furthermore, it's mated to a smooth 7-speed automatic transmission. When properly equipped, the half-ton Titan will gladly tow 9,740 pounds. Payload capacity, meanwhile, is rated at 1,950 pounds. Moving on up to the not exactly heavy-duty nor light-duty Titan XD, the Cummins V8 turbo diesel unlocks the full potential of the workhorse. Torque is of the essence, and with 555 pound-feet on tap, capability is top drawer stuff. The oil-chugging 5.0-liter power plant is the key to the 12,310-pound maximum towing capacity and 2,080-pound payload. If, however, you want even more capability from your truck without going 3-4-ton, Ford's F-150 with the 3.5-liter EcoBoost V6 is the new king of the hill thanks to a towing capacity of 13,200 pounds. The Californian fabricators from 0 to 60 design have made no secret of the fact that their Mustang-based GDT on display at SEMA has taken design inspiration from the GT supercar. Well, as it turns out, Ford itself isn't too happy with the car and is considering legal action against the tuner. We're aware of the 0 to 60 design's Mustang GDT, a Ford spokesman told Cars Coupes. Mustang and GT feature important design elements that uniquely and individually identify both as Ford performance vehicles. Ford's legal counsel is investigating how best to address the matter. 
ask to clarify whether any actions have already been taken against the Californian tuner, the spokesperson said, all I know is that Ford's legal team are aware and investigating. Apparently, the Blue Oval did not appreciate the fact that, from a number of angles, the GVT's customized exterior mimics the GT remarkably well. Perhaps the most convincing area on the car are the sides, where the skirts and the air intakes in front of the rear wheels clearly resemble those of the GT. Other GT-inspired components include the round tail lights, although there are four rather than two, rear spoiler and huge front grille and silver lip. Alongside the model's questionable design, it benefits from a supercharger, lifting power from the 5.0-liter V8 to a massive 800 HP. Although 0 to 60 design says it has received interest in the body kit, there's a chance Ford could force the project to be scrapped. Here's a rule of thumb, plug-in hybrids are more expensive than regular hybrids, and to some extent, more complex and heavier. The bigger battery, however, makes the pricing difference worth it thanks to many more all-electric miles, and Hyundai is aware of this aspect all too well. Following in the footsteps of the $22,200 hybrid and $29,500 electric, the Ionic plug-in hybrid joins the US lineup of the South Korean automaker at $24,950. Most importantly, it's $2,150 less than the Toyota Prius Prime, therefore making it more compelling for customers who care about value. Want to talk specs? The EPA-rated electric range, coming courtesy of an 8.9 kWh battery, is 29 miles on the combined cycle. The Prius Prime, by comparison, squeezes out 25 miles from an 8.8 kWh battery. The total driving range also favors the Hyundai, 650 versus 640 miles, though the MPGE rating puts the Toyota ahead of the newcomer at 133 compared to 119 MPGE. From a thinking man's point of view, the Ionic plug-in hybrid makes sense a lot. And even if you're prepared to spend $28,300 for the range topping limited trim level, it's still a lot of car and a lot of efficiency for the money. Better still, Hyundai did the transmission right for this model. Instead of an ECVT as you'll find in most hybridized Toyota models, the Ioniq, and equivalent Kia Niro, is equipped with a dual clutch transmission. You know, the sort of gearbox with actual forward gears, which the driver can select to aid with engine braking and the sort. Not only does the DCT make the Ionic feel more car-like than a continuously variable transmission, but it's also seamless as far as shifting is concerned. Want an even better argument why Hyundai outdid Toyota as its own game? The Prius Prime seats four instead of five people. Then there's the condensed cargo space. 19.8 cubic feet compared to 23.8 for the Ionic plug-in hybrid. After Toyota's Japanese division applied the Model Lista treatment to the all-new Camry, the time has come for the crown to put on its best suit. Confirmed to premiere at the Tokyo Auto Salon 2018 in January, the sportified sedan doesn't feature any performance improvements at all. What the Model Lista is to Toyota is nothing but an aesthetic package, though the differences over the regular crown are nothing to scoff at. See the two-tone aerodynamic diffuser at the rear? Yeah, you'll notice no less than four exhaust pipes in that area, as well as some silver trim located at the extremities of the rear bumper for that additional visual specialness. Admiring the Model Lista from the profile, the upgrades over the standard model are obvious. Bigger wheels wrapped in more aggressive tires, chrome finished trim where the front fenders meet the front doors, pizzazz on the side mirrors, and larger side skirts on the menu. The front, however, 
is the true business end of the 2018 Toyota Crown Model Lista. A mishmash of elegant and sporty, the only drawback to the Modelista spec front fascia is the bumper, which sits lower to the ground because of the add-on spoiler lip. Toyota didn't offer any details whatsoever about what hides under the hood. In fact, not even the bone stock crown hasn't been detailed in this regard, though it's not hard to guess what's what. Underpinned by the Toyota new global architecture that's used by models ranging from the CHR crossover to the latest generation of the Lexus LS, the all-new Crown will be offered with four- and six-cylinder engines. The lineup is likely to start with the 2.0-liter 6AR FSE, while the range-topping power plant should come in the form of the 3.5-liter 2GR FKS. Instead of a good OL manual gearbox, an 8-speed automatic and a continuously variable transmission for the hybrid powertrain are also expected. Also known as the H1 Travel in Germany and IMAX in Australia, the Grand Sterex enters the 2018 model year with a well-deserved nip and tuck. The design didn't change much since the light commercial vehicle was introduced way back in 2007, but this facelift fits the Grand Sterex like a hand in glove. Available to order in South Korea, the 2018 Hyundai Grand Sterex features, well, better everything. As far as the exterior design is concerned, the people carrier switches from vertical headlights to horizontal clusters. The lower part of the bumper, cascading grille, quarter panels, and hood are all new, bringing the Grand Sterex in line with contemporary Hyundai models. From the profile, there's not much to set the facelift apart from the original, whilst the rear is beautified by double C-shaped tail light graphics. The range topping urban is the one that looks best thanks to projector style halogen headlights, LED daytime running lights, and LED tail lights. 5150mm long and sporting a wheelbase of 3200mm, the Grand Sterex offers seating for 9 people in urban form. The entry level and mid range models claim 11 or 12 seats. Stepping inside reveals major changes including more car-like trim pieces, an i30-inspired 8.0-inch infotainment system, four-spoke steering wheel, and a revised gear lever. Under the hood, you'll find an updated 2.5-liter turbo diesel. The CRDA develops 140 metric horsepower and 353 nanometers when connected to the standard six-speed manual transmission. Opting for the 5-speed automatic upgrades the oil chugging engine with variable geometry turbocharging technology, translating to 175 PS and 451 nanometers of torque. 4WD is, as it was the case before, an optional extra. Other mods ushered in by the 2018 Grand Sterex include a locking differential for the 4WD system, hill start assist, better sound insulation, and a softer suspension. The cheapest 2018 Hyundai Grand Sterex, style, starts at 21100000 $19,625, and at the other end of the range, the Urban in exclusive configuration is $30,150,000 $28,040 at current exchange rates. Here was once a time when Jaguar, hungry for re-establishing itself as a driving force within the automotive industry, came up with the CX-75. Inspired by the XJ220 from the 1990s but thoroughly modern inside and out, the hybrid electric concept didn't get the go-ahead for production. And that's sad considering that Jaguar definitely needs a supercar as its new halo vehicle. Looking back at the CX-75, which was unveiled in 2010 at the Paris Motor Show and came to be with the know-how of the Williams Formula One team, it's a miracle that Jaguar agreed to feature the bite the back of your hand beautiful concept in James Bond, Spectre as the bad guy's ride. The appearance as Mr. Hinks's car led many enthusiasts and motoring journalists to believe that Jaguar is secretly preparing the CX-75 for production, more so if you consider that Jaguar's first mid-engine prototype race car, the XJ13, was finished and running by March 1966. It would have been an awesome 50th birthday present, 
but because the leaping cat is currently chasing volume over specialness, what we got in return are the F-Pace and E-Pace utility vehicles. Disheartening turn of events, isn't it so? Even though our wishes haven't come true, at least not for the time being, st. Petersburg-based designer Aksyonov Nikita took to his Photoshop skills to remind us what a great addition to the range the CX-75 would be. And not just CX-75, but an open-top one of those. And if you know your Jaguar models well, you'll instantly recognize the prominent buttress from the F-Type Project 7, a design element inspired by the D-Type racing car from the 50s. While we keep dreaming with our eyes wide open about what could have been and might be, it's worth remembering that 250 examples were supposed to be built in partnership with Williams. At what price a pop, you ask? Anything between 700,000 and 900,000 of Her Majesty's pounds sterling, which is not that expensive considering the rarity, complexity of the powertrain, and the fact that pricing would have been in the same ballpark as the McLaren P1.